Okay, chapter two, part seven. Uh, we are going, you know, we've looked at the masquerades. We're going to move on. Principles of composition. So we're a little more into the principles of art as opposed to the elements. The elements are like the things that are made, the art is made up of, such as color, line, time, motion, space, and so on. Now we're going to talk about composition. Now this doesn't always get in the list of pr the principles of art. You won't always see this. But the principles of composition are balance or the principles of design. That's another way it's worded. Balance, rhythm, proportion, scale, emphasis, unity, and variety. Plus we're going to get into some architectural stuff. So this is going to be a couple more videos. All right. So uh, when we talk about uh, the principles of design, we're looking at um, how it's composed, right? So in this case, we're back to this example. We're going to use the similar examples and repeat these different concepts on the same examples, hopefully to get this to come home to you. This is a symmetrical piece. I think we know that. But if you cut it this way, and that's usually the vertical is usually the way it's looked at for painting and drawing. And in this particular case, um, this is sort of a flat work. Uh, in terms of the design elements, you know, it's got texture, whatever, but um, we're going to consider it a flat work. You cut it down the middle, like if you were to do a mirror and put a mirror right here, basically this would look the same on these two sides. So that is your symmetry, your symmetrical, symmetrical balance, visual weight is distributed evenly. Asymmetrical balance, back to this one again, we use this for a bunch of different things, um, but if we put a line down here, it's not very symmetrical, right? It's got some um, uh, some bright colors over here, and it's got some open space. And then over here, this has got a large object here in the foreground. This has sort of a small object, so it's a bit lopsided, okay? That is asymmetrical, uneven. Radial balance, now it's a little confusing because we really wanted to be looking straight down on this. It's not, we're looking at it somewhat um, isometrically and uh, we want to be looking straight down on it. So if we were to cut this this way, it would make sense. If we were to cut this this way, it would have um, this, well, the similar proportions and similar amounts of stuff like this central part here uh, radiates outward meaning that if you were to go go back here see how there's one courtyard there and there's a courtyard there and there's a courtyard there so it's coming out from that area then there's a secondary courtyard there secondary courtyard here walking area etc so it radiates from the central and it is symmetrical and it's radial Okay, now this is a different concept, rhythm, and you want to think about this um, in terms of repetition, okay? So if you don't have repetition, you probably don't have rhythm. Now it doesn't have to be this. elements repeatedly placed side by side okay so there would be like split down the middle and something would be different over here eccentric rhythm irregular but not so much that the visuals do not co connect okay so proportion and scale um, and I'm, I really think when we get into the Mutu collages I'm really hoping you use these terms and you use them correctly so in proportion, the size of one part in relation to another within a work of art. Okay, so say we have a figure and a sculpture of a figure, and it looks like a real human. Then we know it is proportional, right? And the scale of the head to the body would be normal. Now in a bobblehead doll, for example, the head is giant, or lots of cartoon images like that, and the body is small. And so that's playing around with proportion and the scale, okay? So proportion within the piece that we're looking at here, we have an architectural example. This is in Venice, California. I've driven by this a few times. 
we are playing around with the scale and proportion. The scale of this object, pair of binoculars, is completely uh, off, you know, out of control. It's, it's, this is for a giant that doesn't exist, right? <laughs> it's enormous. It's even a parking garage. You drive through it and you park your car back in there. So he's playing around. This is Klaus Oldenburg and his um, wife, which I can't, Kusi, I think it is, Van Bruggen. So this is an oh, here, uh, a Geary building, Frank Geary building over here. And he also designed the New Getty. If you guys go to that, that's his design. This is a little bit older than that. Um, but anyway, he's playing around here with proportion and scale. Okay. Um, so here, again, we have a large Buddha um, relative to the size of this building. I mean, this is a, an interior carved live living rock piece. Um, but you get a sense of the importance, okay, of the Buddha in this context. Because if this person or this figure, it's usually a royal or a deity, uh, a religious figure, is larger than all the other figures. So notice there's figures down here. There's figures down here. They are of lesser importance than the large figure, okay? That is why proportionally this person is quite a bit larger than that or the scale, okay? Hieratic, that's exactly what I was describing as hieratic scale or hierarchical scale. So he's, uh, you know, the Buddha is the most important piece here, okay? Emphasis, one or more focal points in an artwork. So... Um, when you have <clears throat> several, the lesser ones are called accents. I don't know that I would say there's a, a really strong emphasis here. The light areas, I guess, is what we're going to call as the emphasis. But usually you have like a central figure or something like that. Okay, unity and variety. This is a good example for that. And this goes back to our rhythm sometimes too. Like there's a rhythm... Of these shapes, it's an irregular rhythm, but you're constantly having these kind of sort of uh, rectangular, sort of odd shapes. They kind of repeat, and that gives you somewhat of an irregular rhythm. So the unity is the overall co cohesion within the work. So it, this unity is achieved with brown palette and shape, simplified geometric versions of the human body. Um, so there's kind of like, you know, you kind of see basically here the best leg is the best uh, form that you can see there, but it's supposed to be a bunch of legs moving and torsos and, and it's all discombobulated because we're dealing with, um, cubism, which Duchamp got kicked out of cubism because of this piece and another piece, new descending the staircase. But anyway, that's too much information. Just know that the, this has a lot of unity because of the color scheme for the most part in the shapes. It does have variety because the shapes are not identical, okay? Unity because of repeating similar shapes and the color palette. Variety because of their, the shapes are not identical. Okay, so structural systems and architecture. Um, this is changing gears here a little bit, but you want to make sure you understand this. Uh, when we get into earthworks, this is not an earthwork. Okay, this is an architectural piece. A lot of people use this as an example. That is incorrect. This is not just a pile of dirt. This is a pile of dirt <laughs> covered with a bunch of stones. Okay, so um, there are different structural systems in architecture. This is the oldest, most basic style, and it's called load-bearing construction. And all of the areas of the walls um, are uh, support, sorry, the structure above them. The walls have few openings. So there's a little tiny opening here at the top. Down here, it would be very difficult, okay? So this is New World Pyramids. The Old World Pyramids in Egypt managed because they're made out of a harder stone and no dirt interior. Those are a little bit more complicated and they do have passages inside. These do not, okay? The openings are going to be at the top where there's less load bearing. Literally, this piece here has to support all this weight. That's why it's wider and bigger, and it has to get smaller as it goes up. Um, if you did the reverse, it would collapse. That's later in different type of construction, load bearing construction. Post and lintel, this is the next development. 
so we have a lintel. We have a um, a stone go across here. We also get into wood, but but let's stick with stone for the moment. The limit to how uh, wide this opening would be would be how far apart could these two posts be before this lintel starts to crack, okay? So you see all that weight is pushing down and this is uh, pushing up and that holds the lintel in place. And I'm gonna stop there.